Hello, this is Ryan from Let's Roleplay, and you're watching my channel news for March 27th, 2023. So in this video, I'm going to go over the polls at the end after a bit of channel news, news from my channel, and I guess my life that affects my channel. Now, I was going to kind of scoot in more so you can see me. I noticed some, a lot of other people do their webcam videos, like their their heads are a lot closer. See, my, my monitor is 34 inches wide, big gaming, curved gaming monitor, so I, it's pushed way back. But normally, this camera would be a lot closer because, you know, my smaller monitor next to me is, would have been about in the middle. But this literally is as far back on this main monitor is as far back on the desk as we'll go. So I, I seem kind of distant and, <laughs> you know, moving my head up a little closer. This is probably where it should be. Although now I have to look down, like I'm at a movie theater where you have to look, when you're up too close to the screen, you have to look way down to see everything or up or wherever. I did that once. I think it was Lord of the Rings. Was it the Return of the King? The movie Peter theater was packed. Yeah, this is 20 years ago. And, uh, oh yeah. I, and I literally had to bend my head to look around everything. There's two, we had to go in the very front row. It was ridiculously overpacked. That was all that was left. So, yeah, regretted that. I'll never get that close to the movie theater again, to the screen. All right, uh, so I was planning on doing this video yesterday, but I wasn't feeling too well. I don't know if everybody, anybody else gets this, but I get this like, if I'm fighting off something that say my kids bring home, which they do a lot, quite often, I just get fatigued. About half the time I get fatigued for two, three days. And uh, like, it's a deep fatigue where you just don't really feel like doing much of anything. And I get that. And then after that, I'm fine again. Everything is back to normal, which is what I'm kind of feeling like today. It's back to normal. It's weird. And then the other half, I'm getting sick alongside with them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's very strange. So April 1st is right around the corner. As I said, it's 27th today. I have to look way down to the date on my monitor now that I'm so close. But yeah, uh, April 1st is right around the corner and I'll be putting something out. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, don't abandon me if it sounds ludicrous. <laughs> so, I'm not also not sure what's going to be happening in the next couple weeks. Um, I hope all goes well here, because we do plan to paint, paint part of our place. But we are also looking at the new hardwood floors that we had installed uh, in last August. Some of the things, we don't want to move. It's our, One of the furniture's already damaged a bit of the floor, and, and it's heavy, and we're, it's just so much work. And remember, my spine is injured, so... This is like hell. If I if I really had to paint much like half the place, which we plan on doing, uh, I probably wouldn't be able to move for a week after. It will, it would be really bad for me. So I I mean I can use lots of uh, medication and alcohol, but I don't. Yeah, so I'm not going to be able to work. I'm not going to be able to do it in my videos on my channel if we do that. But I don't know. My wife is the one that's really worried about scratching the floor, so I don't know what to do. I mean, even with all the help we can get. I know you can put tracks down there, but she just is, now she's wanting to hold off no matter what. So I don't know. That was what we're going to do this week, but apparently not. But who knows? I'm going to talk to her about it. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get it going again. Because I just want to get it over with. All the paint in the house, except for my two boys' rooms, is the original color paint. And it's awful, whoever chose these these paint colors. Ugh. This, what you see in the back, that's, uh, I don't know if you can see the blue. It's like a gray blue. I didn't choose that. <laughs> I don't know what I would have chosen for down here. But anyways, so that's what's going on in this home that will affect my channel. I have uh, enough videos for maybe a week if I just stop making them today, but I plan to make a Fallout 4 video after this. But as for me, otherwise, uh, my Xbox Series X is coming this Wednesday. And uh, I was going to get it, but... I do have Resident Evil 4 and the Dead Space remakes already here, ready to go. As I, I went and picked up Dead Space like a month ago, thinking it would work on my Xbox One uh, X, which I thought was the latest Xbox still. I didn't even know, because when it's a Series X, I just thought, okay, well, that, that's what it's referring to the Xbox One X, so I was a little confused. <laughs> But yeah, it doesn't work. I tried the Dead Space game. It doesn't work. It doesn't work on my Xbox One X. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this Series X. Another one. So I have a 360 Xbox One X upstairs. I don't even know what to do with them. Apparently all the games work all the way back to the first Xbox on the Series X. Why do I need the other ones? I mean, we have a, I don't know what it is, 47-inch TV down here in the basement in the man cave. 
but we don't really use it that often. My kids sometimes come and play on it. If I'm playing games and not recording, they can come and watch something on it, but I don't know. We don't have it set up for anything. <sighs> Too many Xboxes, I guess. I mean, do people even want them donated these days? I guess I could just recycle them. It's the only thing I can think of. Okay, so yeah, uh, Jedi Knight Survivor is also coming out at the end of next month. I'm looking forward to that too. That and the weather is starting to warm up. It's a little weird because it's pretty cold during the night and during the morning. But by the middle of the day, it's getting warm here in the Vancouver area. Even though it's still cold as heck at night. But I'm looking forward to getting up my bike again, especially since the snow is gone as a couple weeks ago. And uh, yeah, it would be nice to have a couple weeks off just to like take a break. <laughs> Because all I do is I get sick, <laughs> or I'm dealing with like a migraine, or my it, my back is so sore I can't really do much. Uh, take still take care of everything at home, or I make videos. That's my life. Um, yeah, no, I don't get a break. I get nothing. <laughs> I don't consider being sick and trying to uh, get better taking a break. That's not a vacation. Um, yeah. Okay, so. It would be nice, but, you know, I do love making my videos, I really do. It's something that I enjoy. I don't like it when I'm sick or uh, suffering from insomnia. That's another thing that I tend to have. It's been really bad this beginning of this year so far. It's been really bad. I'm just starting to get over it in the last few weeks. I've been getting in some, some decent sleep, but it takes weeks to fully recover, especially the older you get. I mean, I'm 47. If I was 27, probably a couple days. Now it takes me like two weeks. Actually, that's not true, because I, I was getting... I had uh, insomnia back in my 20s. It would still take a week to recover. Now it takes me two weeks. Uh, when I'm 67, three weeks, four weeks, who knows? <laughs> okay, so let's get into the games. I mean, I'm still... It's, it may surprise some people. I'm still adding mods to Skyrim and Fallout 4, even now. Fallout 4 is over, what am I, 115, 17, 18 videos in. Still adding the occasional mod. But for Skyrim, I'm, I'm still looking up mods that will help. I mean, I'm hearing about other mods occasionally, and I go in and look, and I'm like, yeah, well, this will work on mine. I'll, I'll add it. And uh, right now, it's for Skyrim. I mean, I went through an issue back that started back in February where I blindly upgraded a mod from my mod organizer, which is a really, really bad mistake. Nobody do this. I didn't know. I'm using Vortex, and yes, I know Vortex apparently is as good as, say, Mod Manager 2, but Vortex works perfectly fine for my needs. I don't really need to do any anything special for it. It's worked fine for Fallout 4, works fine for, for Skyrim. I'm happy with it. For the, um, I didn't use it for Oblivion or for Morrowind, though. I used, um, their own. I have to look down. What does it say? Okay, Rybash, I think I used for Oblivion. And I del did I delete it for Morrowind? I finished Morrowind in, like, two years ago, almost. So I don't even think I have it on my dex desktop anymore. But yeah, was, uh, so Rybrash, Bash, not sure what it was. It was something like that. It may have been some kind of Bash name for Morrowind. And uh, yeah, Vortex is fine for me. Works out great for me. Uh, so what happens is you can click on a button, Vortex. This is your mod manager, by the way. You download and it organizes where the mods are going in the order. And it also tells you if there's any conflicts, which is really helpful. Because the old... <laughs> Mod managers, I mean, going back to the Oblivion days, didn't always really tell you about <laughs> mods conflicting, but Vortex does. And I think they've been doing that for a good 10 years or so for mod managers, what what conflicts and what doesn't. Uh, so yeah, so Vortex has you push um, update, look for updates for all your mods. So it searches online on Nexus Mods for updates, and it will let you know. And then you have a choice to just like click to update on your list of mods on the mod organizer, and I will never do that again. Always go to the mod and look to see how it will affect your game. Because I, I thought that, okay, people, the mod the mod creators would, if there's an update, they would have, because they have the option to say, well, you have to come to the the, the, web, the site, or sorry, to the page, the mod page, and choose what you want for your mod. And, or just up, update from where it is, because you can update right off Vortex without looking at it. And I did that for a whole bunch of mods, and yeah, my game got a little screwed up. Uh, I. There was, I don't know what this mod actually does. I think it has to do with animation. But what it did was several, and I noticed in Riften, I don't know about others outside that, because I didn't really go into any other cities other than Whiterun and Falkreath 
and I didn't notice anybody disappeared, they, even though they might have been, but it will make certain NPCs disappear when they're outside, oddly enough, not when they go inside a building. And uh, so I, I noticed three, three NPCs, all women, wearing armor, not clothing. That happened in Riften. So I was looking up the the the, fe the women part with the, the women mods, because uh, female mods, and armors to, to go along with that. That's where I was looking. I was looking in the wrong direction. And then I realized it was one of the mods I just blindly updated. I'll never do that again, because it could have been much worse. I could have completely screwed up my game. So yeah, for all you modders out there, if you're using Vortex, don't ever blindly, don't ever blindly up, update your mod. Always go to look see because what it was, it was a version for my mod, um, my setup, which wouldn't have worked. It was for like a good old games setup or something, or even older, like because uh, there was an issue where because they still update Skyrim. The, the game is what 12 years old now, this year, the end of this year. And they're still updated. So what happens when Bethesda updates, um, it can throw a bunch of mods off. And what it did was it, it totally wrecked a mod that is called Dynamic Animation Replacer, which a lot of people, a lot, hundreds of mods, the newer mods were using, and it wrecked it so it wasn't working. And you would think, oh, fine, just update it. But no, the mod creator, uh, no one could reach the mod creator for like a good year. Or longer because I think it hadn't been updated since 2021 they did this in September of 2022 so everyone was trying to contact this person and he hadn't updated it since then so people were afraid well, okay well let's roll it back the version of the the update I don't know how they did that and let's um, use it from there so now you have two different versions of it going and that's where it was with this updated mod was for the the rollback that people have been doing and it didn't work with my version so uh fortunately the person who made dar did come back uh in january they came back and made a mod and i didn't find out about that till about two weeks ago and there's a whole bunch of mods that were opened up because of it uh it's an animation dynamic animation mod your character and npcs will do more realistic things like as i'm talking right now they will express yourself they may you know hold their uh their arms like this or you know what i mean or just like whew, you know they just do more realistic things that human beings do instead of just standing there and talking to you like a unanimated npc which tends to be the norm in skyrim not sure so much about fallout 4 but it and there's other things like uh as you're picking up something your character picks up something you may see your hand reach out and grab it Sorry, my tissue paper. And um, things like that, just to make it seem more realistic. And uh, kids, like there's a mod for, it's called Animated Children or something like that. So you know kids don't like st just standing still. So a kid may sway back and forth as they're talking to you. And I have that going as well. Now there's a lot of mods that opened up. that. Unfortunately, when I was putting Skyrim together, they because Dynamic Animation Replacer wasn't working for the newer version that Bethesda had updated, I, uh, I had to not use a whole bunch of mods. So now that it's opened up in the last couple weeks, I've been probably added about 20 mods to my game, which I'm very excited about. I'm already seeing uh, characters in the last the videos I've made, the last uh, probably five videos that are on my channel. They're already doing things. Uh, it may not be super noticeable, but if you know how they, they usually act, then yeah, it is something that you'll see. And for Fallout 4, I'm still adding minor ones. Uh, recruitment of people to your settlements is one that I, I like. Because, you know, especially that, I don't know, what's his name? Johnny or Donnie? The little boy that says, there's a sea monster out there. I'd like to recruit him to my settlement, but with the vanilla game, that it wasn't possible. In fact, a lot of people you can't recruit that you encounter out there. But there's a mod maker that's done about 30 recruitment uh, um, pe people where you can recruit into your settlements. And I told this person to put that little kid, Donnie Kowalski or whatever his name, on the list. And um, she or he said that th he's coming soon. So I guess I can always travel back and get him. And it's nice to have more children in the settlements. I have a mod that was supposed to bring in... Uh, Ch children it hasn't worked for fallout 4 i don't know what's going on they were supposed to come you know how you can just get settlers come to your settlement to join with your radio tower broadcasting they're supposed to be what was it 20 percent were supposed to be children and i haven't had a single one come maybe i'm just unlucky but i don't know i have a feeling it's not working right i should have seen at least one come so far but none have 
Okay, so let's, uh, as for Neverwinter, this is kind of weird because obviously Neverwinter is my least favorite game that I play. Uh, Fallout 4 was my favorite game until I started playing Skyrim. Now, with all the mods with Skyrim, it does feel like quite a new game. Plus, I also like the game and the lore, the gameplay, uh, more melee orientated and the lore. Riding around on horses is, is awesome. Uh, Apparently, I get to ride a dragon eventually, which I've never even seen. I mean, I think I've seen just the trailer for that, for uh, uh, Dragonborn, and that's it. Uh, I'm kind of leaving, saving that for myself, so when I, I do get to ride a dragon. I hope I can ride it outside of um, Solstheim. Maybe not. I should be able to ride it everywhere. Someone let me know if you can't ride it in, in the main map, because that, that would kind of suck, actually. But, um, yeah, so uh, Neverwinter Nights being the least favorite, Skyrim's taken over from my most, and Fallout 4 used to be. But, as many of people have said, the original campaign for Neverwinter Nights, The Wailing Death, is mediocre. And I don't mind it, but when compared to the other games that I'm working on, it's, I mean, the other games like driving a sports car, <laughs> and Neverwinter Nights is like driving an old beat-up car that like, just can get you where you're going, and that's about it. <laughs> On the other hand, if I was just playing Neverwinter Nights and none of the, uh, no other game, you'd I'd get used to it and I wouldn't have any complaints, right? So it it would be different that way. It's just because, and everybody's like this. If you have a choice of what to play, obviously you're going to want to go with your favorite, right? What you're interested in the most. So I'm sure many people have noticed the new video clips. Uh, the video clip that's like, share, and subscribe that comes after my journal intros. And I thought it could help, uh, help my channel, because I've been watching other people with their videos on their channels, and that some have little animations that pop up as they're talking, like I'm talking. But I, um, I didn't, I mean, I could have looked into that. There's some ways of doing that for me. I'm not sure if these people hire animators, but there's a website I go to, and they didn't have that option to have that come up, or... To, there's free ones that you can use, but they still take up all the uh, screen. So I figured I'd go and make my own from the website that I use for these things. And uh, it it's not something that pops up while my video is going, but it takes over the screen, as I said. So it's just a way, the way I made it was uh, cinematic to remind people. I thought it would be, you know, hey, like, share, and subscribe. It's uh, just a way of getting your attention. So they also have new animated endings. They are slideshows and game videos playing. My goal is to make things more attention getting, and that's what that's all about. I hope people don't find it too distracting and annoying. So, okay, let's get on to the polls. Do you think it is possible to play an MMO, The Elder Scrolls Online, fully in character, or will all the other players with their texts and running around on lore breaking mounts with baby animal pets following them around break too much immersion? Can you play The Elder Scrolls completely without grouping with others? So, out of 226 votes, I think that may have been a record at that point. There's another poll or two with more votes than this, though. So, yes, if you are careful and if you don't have to group, 17%. Yes and no. People might forgive it because it's MMO, though, 52%. I doubt it would be with your usual talent of being in character, 14%. Not at all. It would be a horrible mess. Don't bother. 17%. I'm a little leery of all the things that I mentioned happening in here while I'm trying to re make videos. It is a little hard. What if I'm just standing there and a person comes right up to the screen and is like jumping <laughs> right on my character or trying to hit my character? Yeah, I can see people doing that. Although, I mean, I played MO for years. I can't really see that happening too often, but if you're in a busy place, maybe somebody would. <laughs> so Captain Red 1000 says, It'd be hard to maintain a sense of consistency consistency between the in-universe world and the in-game world. Some MMOs have dedicated roleplay servers, so that could help alleviate this to a degree. Yeah, I agree. That said, uh, where something like Baldur's Gate and Skyrim have designated beginning, middle, and ends, MMOs are designed to always be including new content and new stories that serve as sequels to the previous adventure, so a dedicated Let's Roleplay would likely never end. <laughs> Until they stop supporting the game, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brada Oz, Brada Ozzy, 
ESO in particular is really good solo questing wise. That's how I spend most of my time in the game and I enjoy it thoroughly. The side quests and lore are rather enjoyable in my opinion. Sin the Conductor. You can do it in ESO. It's our role playing so you don't have to worry about best in slot or any meta stuff. You can also cosmetically make your character have an outfit of sorts so your gear won't show up. Helps with role playing. Also, first person in ESO works just fine, especially if you're not trying to be the best multiplayer wise. I didn't know you could play it in first person. I thought it was just third person. Ash wrote, it's an interesting idea to try. I'd definitely give it a watch if you attempted it. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody's attempted that. Maybe. I would think somebody has. Keys from THC. It's possible if you had a team of role players, but it's a grindy slog like all MMOs. But you could stream it and use it to interact with your community. I think the biggest grind that I've ever played was uh, EverQuest, so... <laughs> I mean, that's so much grinding, it's ridiculous. But I've heard that... Isn't there, like, a Final Fantasy game that was even worse? Hrolf of Blood of Blood. I think you have a problem playing fully in character all the time in an MMO, but would still be able to do some of the things you do regularly, intros and inner monologue. Regardless, I'd love to watch you play through it. I don't need you to be fully in character for everything. If it's a game that I'm interested in, regular Let's Plays are fine with me as well. Death Legion 6 wrote, You may need to make a new character every per expansion. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure. I, I, I totally know what you're saying. I'm not sure why I would need to make a new character every expansion. So, a lot of the times when there are expansions, if my character is not the level required, obviously I just wouldn't even be able to do it. John Bear 95 wrote, the stories and quests can pretty much be played solo. Yeah, that's what I heard. Somebody actually wrote on my channel a couple years ago that they played ESO for two years and they never even talked to anybody. <laughs> um, El Violador. El Violador. I play video games to get away from people even if there is solo content. I just don't do MMOs. I don't... I. Don't I try to stay away from MMOs now? I'm uh, focusing on my in-character role plays, and I don't just don't have time to play them outside of that. Really, Mary Beth Reimer wrote, "I can't answer because I've never played ESO. Neither have I, actually." Noah Miller, I mean, there's always our role-playing servers. Yeah, that's what um Captain Red brought up. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, next poll. What do you think about me doing an Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall Let's Role Play in the Unity engine? I showed a video of this back on the 20th of November. This would be after Skyrim, of course, and before the Elder Scrolls 6. If it ever comes. <laughs> 200 votes. Yeah, if it ever comes. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure, well, there's nothing new in the news. I just, I don't know, with the economy the way it is. I don't think it's really affected video games too much. Uh, on... A lot of other companies are scaling back, though, but, this, I mean, if it gets worse, if more banks fail, I keep hearing every week that banks are failing, they're looking at Deutsche Bank in Europe might go under, too, which would destroy the European economy, and don't think that that wouldn't have a, um, an effect on the rest of the world. It really would. So, um, 200 votes. It would be a great slot to fill until The Elder Scrolls 6, 78%. It might be good, but I think doing ESO would be better. 12%. It should be okay. 8%. No, don't bother with it, even with the newer engine. It's old. 3%. Bunch of comments here. I can't even read that. WJDBS. Isbudabuda. Dude, I literally found your channel through your Baldur's Gate roleplay with Oren, and I've loved your content ever since. Haha, <laughs> I'll gladly watch you play Daggerfall when you get around to it. Great idea, by the way. A great name for any generation. Patrick Quinn, Daggerfall Unity runs great. I just re recommend a mod for the procedural generation of non-main story dungeons so they all actually become doable. Otherwise, play away. You can get lost in an RP of this game. Yeah, uh, I've read about that. There was some mod I chose which makes the dungeons smaller. The the non-main story dungeons and makes them smaller. I'm not. I mean, I haven't tested it that much. It's just something that I plan on doing after this. I plan to make a Fallout 4 video, and then I'm just going to be playing Daggerfall. 
for a while and try to get up a few levels, maybe around level 5, and then I'll use that for my next game analysis video. So, Hroth Alfblad, you know I'm here for Dagfall if you decide to play it. Sounds good. JTTL, well, Sky Oblivion official release date is 2025 with statements possibly earlier. Craig Villanueva, uh, yes. I've s How long have you been on my channel? I think I've saw seen that face from ages ago. This little uh, avatar. Death Legion 6, could run the Daggerfall Skyrim mod. Is it Daggerfall Skyrim mod? Oh, wait, I think I heard about that. They just have the main story in it. It could be interesting. I haven't really looked... Oh, wait. No, I didn't look that one up. I don't think so. I'd have to look into that. Jacob Jones. Hey, dude. Daggerfall Unity has a wealth of mods you can play with and more are being made and updated at all times. I know there are scant comments on this, but just because one guy... Because guy1 and guy2 say old game, you should play Sky Oblivion instead. Please do not ignore the results of the poll itself. Daggerfall is as fun as you are creative, which I can't say for Skyrim or Oblivion. Also, graphics, snobs, BTFO. Y'all will play boring games for days because it looks nice. <laughs> okay. I don't remember I don't remember me uh, reading that comment, but I must have because I replied to it. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> yeah, I actually agree. Uh, I would have to, because there's so much side content, I would have to limit it. I don't want to play episode 350 where I'm going through another minor dungeon, which just has a different name and looks, and it's just re different from... Um, because it's procedural. Changed up a bit with everything looking the same inside. I would do it for the main story. And I could do, you know, I could play for a while and level up my character or get what he needs and then go to a main, you know, not record that part and then go to the main part of the story and then record that part and get up. Or even more, like, I don't really know how the side quests work in that game. Obviously there's main story, there's a bunch of side quests. Or is it just main story and tiny side quests, like that guy that wanted me to go duel the other guy. Everything seems to be within a certain amount of time, too, in that game. I think I saw a mod that gets rid of that. No more time that you have to worry about. Just do it whenever you want, kind of like how it is in all the other games since. What is your preference for watching a character? 238 votes. A good character that saves many lives and ends a great evil. I think this is the most votes I've had yet. 11%. Evil characters that harms many good people but wins in the end, 4%. Oh, huh, okay. A good character that turns bad and falls from their position, 17%. Like Breaking Bad. <laughs> a bad character, we just finished that watching that like a month ago, me and my wife. My wife and I. A bad character that turns good and saves the world, 29%. So that seems to be the most popular choice. Kind of like, um... Kind of like Negan, in a way, from The Walking Dead, which we're just finishing up with two more episodes and we'll finish up the final episode or season of The Walking Dead. So, 25 comments. Uh, half of them are probably from me <laughs> responding. Shadow Fox Entertainment says, A good character that is willing to do bad things if he needs to. Coca Loca, as a TTRPG enthusiast, I think a character of any morality can be layered and interesting if they are fleshed out. For games, however, there's the limitation of what games can let you do. Some games don't let you equal content options, so it's kind of depends on the game, really. Don't give you the equal content options. Okay. Uh, TTRP, is that tabletop? Okay, tabletop RPG. Yeah, your pen and... I'm not used to people saying it that way. Pen and paper is what I'm used to uh, seeing people write down. Captain Red 1000. Of the options, I do love a convincing redemption story. I do, however, feel a kinship with the good guys that do bad things occasionally for the right reasons. Meredith Reimer. Depends on the game. Although, I do enjoy a story about someone who overcomes hardships to help others. Yeah. Gawain the Eighth. I picked Fallen Hero, but my preference wasn't an option. Flawed Hero. A basically good guy that does some bad things as a result of competing loyalties, leading to a struggle with grey morality. Hmm. What, what did I write in response to that? Uh, that's a difficult one to describe, I wrote back. They only give me five options, though, but your choice sounds like a lot a lot like my characters. Like a lot of my characters. K.O. Ken King writes, Also, complexity adds a lot to a character. Perhaps a gray man type with a choice between the lesser evil? Nudge, nudge. 
Hmm. I'm not sure how I would even do that, because, I mean, I can have full-on characters, but I can't make evil choices that affect the, especially for Bethesda games, the, the outcome of the game, really. Uh, Demon Nex. I'm just gonna say Demon Nex with your threes. Honestly, it's the Elder Scrolls stock hero model. Start in prison and end up saving the world. Yep. Sin Sin's Project. I love me some anti-hero, but a reformed villain is hands down the best character arc. Negan is one of my favorite characters in modern media, and I absolutely hated him with a burning passion when he was introduced in The Walking Dead. Yeah, it was when he bashed into the, um, Alexandria people's heads, especially... Uh, what was his name? Glenn, who had been there since the f first season. That was really... Ugh. And the way he went out, too. Okay. I don't even want to think of that. <laughs> JTTL. A good person who does good, but occasionally does bad things for the right reasons. Oh, Rick Grimes. Daredevil. Ulfric Stormcloak. Preston Garvey. Preston Garvey did bad things? Uh, that kind of character. Gray is a demon. I enjoy a character that has the right morals, but when it comes to the terrible people he comes across, he will treat them with no mercy at all. So I prefer a good character that is willing to do bad things just to do the right thing. That's kind of like a lot of my characters, actually. Take a break, mate. <laughs> What's with... I don't know if that's leet or not, or it's just clever. Take a break, mate. Uh... Not gonna lie, I prefer a Walter White or Arthas type story. Okay, well, that's falling from where you were. Arthas, yeah, I remember that one. From Warcraft 3. What do you think about my statement that I will play Starfield live as much as I can on my channel? Putting it out, perhaps, daily? 109 votes. 54% went with, I think it's a great idea for your channel and I want to see it. 15% said I'll be playing it myself at that time, so maybe. 31%... I don't care either way, I just want the Let's Roll plays. <laughs> so just one person respond here. Telecaster for 45... 8. Sorry, I couldn't see. I'm also not wearing my glasses. Uh, 45, 8. I thought it looks like a B from back here until I zoom in with my eyes and then it's an 8. Telecaster 45, 8. Going with the Zeitgeist or 458. Going with the Zeitgeist would never be a bad thing for your channel. It's just a big name game with a lot of interest. Yeah. Well, I don't think it can hurt. Okay, this is probably the most votes I've had in any poll. Which Elder Scrolls hero are you? Uh, 292 votes. 3% went with the Eternal Champion. How many of you have actually played played that game? Uh, sorry, um, Arena. So, 4% went with the Hero of Daggerfall. 30% for the Ner Nerevarine. I put, I misspelled it. I put Nevararine. <laughs> but it's, I know. I picked that on. That up afterwards. Uh, oh, it's tied here. 30% Champion of Cyrodiil. 33% the Dragonborn. Yeah, I don't know. where. Which one would I choose? I really... I guess maybe the Nerevarine. That story actually has a lot of meaning to me. Uh, probably one of the most I ever actually felt involved with the video game. When I first played Morrowind back in 2002. But I don't know. I haven't finished uh, Skyrim. So we'll see. Once I finish the Skyrim and all the DLCs, then yeah. So lots of comments I wrote about. My apologies for misspelling Nerevarine. Coca Loca. I have way more hours in Skyrim than the other ones, but being the Nerevarine was a massive experience. The way your role is treated by the game and how you being a reincarnation isn't the end all be all as there have been others who have perished as fallen incarnates. Chef's kiss. Scatterbrain. Definitely the Nerevarine, because you can open bones and stuff. I'm not quite sure what that means, you can open bones and stuff. I don't know, maybe you can explain it or somebody else can. MTG, Gristfan. To be honest, I can't decide. I love the Elder Scrolls 3, 4, and 5. Captain Red 1000. Between the lot, I see myself most likely being the champion of Cyrodiil. The Coffee Badger, an ancient lich. <laughs> Psycho Cat 90. Nerevarine, however you spelled it. N never ever never ever Arine. Demon X. I played Oblivion first and like Oblivion's magic system better, but Skyrim wins because dragons, flying dragons. Mary Beth Reimer. I'm a priest of Arcae. Oh yeah, I asked her about that. She role plays as that. I'm not sure how that would be part of the poll though. 
But it's cool. A lot of people tell me how they are they roleplay on my channel. And that's what my channel is all about. Noah Miller, Nara Vareen, Lucinda Hacker, why ask? I'm not sure. <laughs> Where's that one going? Oh, I've only ever played one, Skyrim. I just wrote back, I put a poll out each week. <laughs> Demon X response series. Why not? Why do anything? Just sit there and let entropy destroy your will to be. <laughs> uh, that's still funny. Okay, next poll. Which fantasy class mostly describes you? 245 votes, second most votes of all time. 18% went with warrior. 11% cleric. 18% rogue. 20% mage. And 33% went with a combination, multi-class, unique class, like a ranger. That would probably be my fit, what I would choose to. But I don't know, I like a warrior type. I've always liked a warrior type of character. But even maybe like a warrior rogue, because I do like doing a lot of stealthy rogue-like things. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a, a combination warrior rogue would be where I would like it most. Demon X, we got the makings of a good adventuring party so far. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. When my last pen and paper game, there was three of us. We all wanted to be thieves of some kind. The assassins, I think, for D&D. &D, uh, which one is it? Five? I've got four up there. I've got five. The player handbook upstairs. I was reading through it a few years ago. That fell through. We never actually started a group. Kind of ended there. But um, all three of us, the guys, <laughs> originally wanted to, to start up the, except for the DM, of course, when we all wanted to be like assassins. Um, yeah. <laughs> Neo Conquer. I'm always the healer. Even in real life, I'm always the one who friends come to help. Kind of like Night Nurse from, uh, or what's her face? Well, you might get the reference. I'd, I just heard that they were calling her Night Nurse. On, um, not the Punisher, uh, Daredevil, the comic books. I think her name is, is her name? I forget what her name is. It's not Karen, it's somebody else. Uh, in the, the, sh the Netflix show. But anyways, uh, Captain Red 1000. My preference changes on a semi-regular basis. Not gonna lie, laugh aloud. Currently, I'm in the, what I call the manger, ranger mage phase. That's interesting. Manger. Manger, manger. Adriana the Werefox. I mean, in all honesty, Nightblade describes most due to both Rogue and Minor Mage. Laugh aloud. Demon X. Nobody ever wants to be the healer. Aloud. Actually, I don't mind being a healer in MMOs. I don't mind it. It's actually, it can be fun. But you, in my experience, you're kind of screwed if you, you don't get a group. So you're very, very group dependent. But every, on the other hand, everybody wants a healer, so... Marion Boner, or I assume that's Boner. That's how you spell it, as far as I know. Uh, Druid Shaman, so Draman, Shuid. What's <laughs> with all these name combinations? Uh, Michael Osborne. My class is normal, dude. Uh, these are the normal warrior, cleric, rogue, mage. That's the the old standard. Uh, okay. JTTL Paladin. Actually, that's a really cool class, too. You're like a healer uh, warrior. Arbaz Shah. I work in healthcare, so... Same with my wife. She's a nurse. Gabil Gathol, NPC. <laughs> okay, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, there's only five choices I can put in these polls, so... <laughs> but, I mean, I could put, like, 20 different... If I could, I'd put, like, more, but... I don't know having... Sometimes when I do a poll, I, I want it specific, like a yes or no. And if I add more, like, people say, well, why didn't you put down all of the above or whatever? And, well, it's, the poll is to see where people fall for certain things, which which is more popular, which, you know, you guys prefer. Now that you've seen Zora in my Skyrim Let's Roleplay, what do you think of her? 58 votes. 29% went with cute voice, very attractive, despite the burn scar. 59% with, not sure yet, sort of probably how you feel too. And 12% went with, no, she just doesn't, doesn't seem to be someone I would like. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I mean, I have the three different potential romance, romantic partners in the, that I modded in. And Zora, I mean, I do like her, but I haven't, the, obviously the big one will be, um, 
excuse me. Uh, what's the vampire? Serana. Vampire Serana. Serana Mod. Then there's Remiel. I haven't met either of them yet. Uh, Sunshine wrote, Personally, I like her. I'd like to see more of her. Her story is interesting. I'd really like to see who her sister is. I may... I may have a thought on that. She is a fair looking woman, even with the scar. Her backstory sounds like she did a bit of character growth, even if she's still working through it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Synopsis of her. Or your view of her. Hroth Alfblad. I'm looking forward to seeing more of her. She seems like an interesting follower. I enjoy the idea of a Breton barbarian as well. Hopefully she lasts longer than the last interesting NPC's follower. Captain Red 1000. As a mod, she appears to be very well made. As a character, I'll reserve judgment for later when I've seen more. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out. I I would like to... Um, It's like going through like a bit of a dating game. <laughs> you got your three women. You need to go meet them and get to know them a little bit before you can pass judgment. You can't be like the very first one you meet. Yep, I'll take her. Well, it's not how I want to do it anyways. You can if you want, but... So this is one of those polls where I really have actually relied on feedback from you guys, which is important to me. Do you feel like the reading of in-game books in my Elder Scrolls... Do you like the reading of in-game books in my Elder Scrolls Let's Roll plays? Can't seem to read now. 174 votes, and the vast majority, the two top picks, you, you guys seem to like what I'm doing here. Yes, I very much like what, when you do that, 52%. 34% went with, I like some of them, but make sure it's spread out. And 7% went with, I'm good with or without them. I mean, taken as a whole, that's in the 90%. So you guys seem to be pretty good, and I'm happy. Especially since my reading has improved so much since uh, I started with Morrowind. I was reading way too fast, and people were telling me, I can't follow along with what you're saying. You're reading, it hurts my head trying to follow along. So 4% went with, they aren't really my thing, but occasionally I don't mind. And 2% went with, I don't want to hear in-game books read at all. Well, for me, in-game books are important because they... Maybe not so much in my videos, but they're important to me to read so I understand the lore of the game. And sometimes I just forget about things um, because, I mean, Skyrim's 12 years old. It's, this November 11th will be 12 years old. And I'll just have I've read even a book several times. I'll just have forgotten exactly certain things out of it over the years. So keys from THC... Yep, love it. Uh, don't I don't spend much time reading those in games. I kind of skim through it, but if something catches my eye, I've I read it. I've probably heard most of it though. You YouTubers, I am losing. I'm losing this. But if something catches my eye, I re I've read it. Probably heard most of it though. YouTubers, but reading it, giving us your own opinion or in-character opinion could be really interesting nonetheless. Yeah, my in-character opinion, I'll definitely give you guys. There was uh, that funny one where the guy, the husband, I didn't quite get this. I always, I always forget about it until the end of the story. I've read that story before where, the, I'm not sure if he's a Dunmer, but anyways, he's uh, some kind of lord and he has all these tournaments, but he's never bedded his wife. And it wasn't, it just said he wasn't doing his husbandly duties. I thought, okay, well, I mean, obviously they consummated, but hasn't, he's not around enough to do it much often with her, and so she wasn't very happy about it. Until I found out at the very end that they had never done it at all, then I kind of understand why the wife was so unhappy. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, Mikhail Arp Franson. I'm one of those nerds who reads them all a hundred times before, so it doesn't add much to me to it for me, but I imagine it's nice for those who haven't really bothered to read them themselves. And besides, with your voice, you could read the backside of a milk carton. I'd be enthralled all the same, I'm sure. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's good praise. That's why I gave you uh, a love. I'm not sure when they added this. I think maybe about a year or two ago, the little love, the heart thing. Good reply. Thank you, Mikhail Arp Franson. Alright, so the last poll now. Uh, 113 votes. What do you think of having two to three companions whom I like to bring along with me in Fallout 4 and my Elder Scrolls Let's Role Plays? 91% with, I like it, you created your own adventure group. And 3% went with, I like just one that they have with you in Skyrim and Fallout 4. And 6% went with, I don't like it at all, it should just be you. Well, I, I've talked to people, well, a few people about this. I find that it might be a little dry without companions for my character story. That's why I was kind of enthusiastic to have the Julan mod. 
uh, for Morrowind. I mean, I don't think many people have played Morrowind with a companion mod. As I didn't at the time. I just did it, went through it and played it by myself, my own character. But I was excited to do it, and especially this one had gotten so much praise. Even though there was a couple places where I was stuck. And I had to, uh, actually had to get the help from the mod modder. At least I was able to contact her a couple years ago through a couple emails. I'm stuck. It's not on the... She actually had a hint thing that she had put out, but it was I still couldn't figure it out. And then I, one of them was actually because I had used a mod that actually covered over the section that you're supposed to go through in her mod. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I just somehow recalled that that could be the, the issue. And uh, I was... What did I do? Oh, okay. So you know what's interesting? I'm very fortunate that that mod inside Caverns... I think it made Caverns look a little bit better. But there was an add-on mod to it, which I didn't even pay any attention to it. This is for Morrowind. Uh, add-on mod for the Julan mod, so it's they're compatible. But I, I didn't have the Julan mod yet, because that was when I was doing my initial making Morrowind look prettier phase. And then I go and add on the other things, like a Julan mod. And uh, thankfully that was there, otherwise I don't know what I would have done. Had to uninstall that mod and got through that tunnel. <laughs> and then maybe... Uh, once I come back out of it, reinstall the mod, but that could really screw your game up if you uninstall mods. Not a good idea. Not a good... You, you can really mess your game up. So, I'm not... That's why it takes time to test these mods to see if they're working right, but you definitely don't want to uninstall a mod in the middle of your... It'll screw your save game up. Not all the time. Sometimes you can get away with it. People, some people said it's fine. Uh, if, you, if you're careful, it's fine. But others have said... I mean, it's just common knowledge you don't do that. So Nathan Hall wrote, I would personally limit it, limit it to two companions, with one of them being non-human. You still have a group with variety while being able to focus on one interpersonal relationship at a time. However, the choice is yours, and I think you've done a good job so far. Well, thank you very much. Apocalypse Apostle. Just going to point out that people like Mike Burnfire has done it. And the banter with the players and companions can be really hilarious at times if you bring the right combination. It has a great potential for entertainment. And Captain Red 1000, to borrow a famous quote, it's dangerous to go alone, take this. I had to ask him what, where that came from. Uh, in the oldest Legend of Zelda game known to man, those are the words an old man uses when he gives you your first sword. I thought maybe that was something that I had said <laughs> in my, one of my Let's Roll plays. But I think that's it for the polls. And yeah, I just wanted to say that I play off a lot of my character's views, and it goes into a lot of their journals, how he, he, he or she, but mostly he, feels about the his companions. So I find it a little... I mean, if they're written well, that's debatable if some of them are, but it definitely will add to the game. It just... It depends if you are... If you like the character or not. But it does add a lot to... And I'm not going to say filler, but to my character's journey to have these companions and how he feels about them and how they feel about him and, and you know, how things are working out. That's... I, I don't think I could do this without companions, actually. I uh, just... That's why I'm a little concerned about the Daggerfall playthrough. Obviously, I, I don't think there's a companion mod. I haven't gone through every mod, but I went through the first ten pages of for Daggerfall. I looked through a lot of mods. I don't know if I would want to look for a mod or a companion mod for that old game. Although the Unity in the Unity engine is a lot more stable. I don't know. Uh yeah. As I say, it, it to me if it's if you don't have any companions, or you play as a group, not one single character, I think it would be less e much less easy to write you can write about your backstory and things like that and But uh, I don't know. Without a companion to bounce off what's happening in the game, it's 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 more limiting. So, for my in-character roleplay videos, I do think it's important to have companions. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you would like to help out and support Let's Roleplay, you can donate at my Patreon account or become a member of my channel, which also comes with perks. Just click on the join video to watch what I put together and what you as a member would get. 
Speaking of patrons, Patreon actually gives me 80% of the money given, whereas YouTube gives 70%. However, you do get the perks with YouTube. Everyone who donates to me on Patreon are also getting their names posted as supporters at the end of my videos. Same thing with PayPal, which gives over 90%. The links for these are in my banner on the bottom right side. So thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see your comments in my videos.